Okay, so the idea of carrot cake in itself is kind of strange when you think about it, but you will not believe the even stranger ingredient that I use in my recipe that results in the most deliciously moist carrot cake. So to start off, you want to preheat your oven to 160C or 320F and grease or line two 8-inch cake tins. As usual, I'm using my homemade cake release to grease my tins. The recipe for it is linked below. Set these aside and in another bowl, sift together your dry ingredients. So I've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, two and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one and three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And then using a whisk, just mix that all together until well combined. This smells so good. <laughs> Okay, set this aside and in a large mixing bowl, add in one and a half cups of soft brown sugar, three large eggs, one cup of unflavored vegetable oil, three teaspoons of vanilla, half a cup of regular yogurt. And now for the strange ingredient I've been talking about, one cup of crushed canned pineapple with the liquid drained. So the way I do this is I drain the liquid from my can, pop the pineapple into my blender and then blend until it's nice and smooth. And then I just measure out 190 grams, which is equivalent to a cup. I really recommend using the gram measurements for my recipes if you want to know exactly the quantities that I use. It's just way more accurate. Now you may be thinking, what is MK thinking? But adding crushed pineapple to a carrot cake is actually quite common and it just adds great flavor and moisture to your cake. And then you just wanna mix that all together with a whisk until it's well combined. And then after that, I'm going to continue mixing for a further minute to incorporate a little bit of air into our batter. Okay, once that's done, add your pre-sifted dry ingredients into your wet ingredients. And using a spatula, fold the batter gently until just combined. Do not overmix this, so just mix until the flour disappears. Once that's done, add in two cups of finely grated carrots. So this is about three medium-sized carrots, and in total is 225 grams alongside one cup of roughly chopped walnuts and or pecans. Today I'm using both, so I've got half a cup of each. And then just fold that all through gently until just combined. You can also add in raisins or whatever else you like in your carrot cake. Again, do not overmix this, so just until it's just combined. Okay, so that is our batter all done, and now we just wanna evenly distribute this into our two eight inch cake tins. And then just give your cake tins a little bang to get rid of any large air bubbles. And now these are going to go into the oven for 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now, they smell incredible, and now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and then turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. Now just take a closer look at how incredibly soft these cake layers are. It's just so, so good. Now you've got to have carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. You just, you just can't go wrong with that combination. So while these are cooling, let's go ahead and make my favorite cream cheese frosting. So start off by creaming together one cup or 225 grams of unsalted butter until it's light and fluffy. If you're using a stand mixer, then you want to do this with the pedal attachment. Next, you want to add in four and a half cups of icing sugar in three batches while mixing on a low speed. So you want to make sure your mix is on a low speed because otherwise your icing sugar is just going to fly everywhere. And you also want to make sure each batch of icing sugar is mixed in well before you add in the next batch. Okay, once that's done, finish off by adding one and a half cups of cold cream cheese. Make sure you're using the firm block type, not the spreadable type. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla and one and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And then just mix that together until just combined and everything is nice and smooth. Avoid over mixing because the more you mix, the softer your frosting is going to become. And that is literally it. Our crazy delicious cream cheese frosting is all done. So to frost my cake, I'm starting off by trimming the tops of my cake layers so that they're nice and flat. My cakes do have a little bit of a dome, which is why I'm doing this step. And then I'm placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand and then placing a generous amount of frosting on top and spreading it out with my offset spatula. Then my next cake layer goes on top and again, I'm spreading a generous amount of frosting on the top of my cake layer and then using my remaining frosting to cover the sides. 
Once I'm done, I like to finish off with my cake scraper to smooth the frosting on the sides. And then I'm also just cleaning up the tops with my offset spatula by bringing in that lip of frosting into the middle of the cake so that I've got some nice sharp edges. Now to finish off decorating, I'm just going to be placing some pecans and walnuts around the top edges of the cake. This just gives it kind of like a little rustic look, which I really like. Okay, and that is it. My beautiful carrot cake is all done. This carrot cake is honestly so incredibly flavorful and moist and the addition of the walnuts and pecans provide a great crunchy texture to the cake. Mmm. Oh my god. So, so good. It's like a literal explosion of flavor in your mouth without being too sweet. And the crumb is just so, so soft. It's so nice, like literally melts in your mouth. If you try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. Nothing makes me happier than knowing that you guys tried my recipe. And it also really helps my content reach more people. I'll see you in the next video.